The story begins with a witch named Alyssa walking through the woods. She suddenly notices a disturbance, and when she checks it out, she finds an abandoned baby. She wonders what a human child is doing there, but she senses that it possesses an abnormal amount of magic. Her thoughts are interrupted as it starts to cry, but the two end up bonding, marking the beginning of their time together. Sixteen years later, we see that the baby Viola is now fully grown. The shopkeeper mistakes her for being the older one, thinking Alyssa must be her apprentice. The man thinks it's nice that she is taking such good care of Alyssa, but in reality, she sticks to her mother because she gets lost easily. The two continue on their way, and we learn that Alyssa is actually 223 years old, but her appearance doesn't change since she's a witch. Viola sees another store she wants to visit, but Alyssa tells her to focus on what they came to buy in the first place. Viola gets her mother to buy her a phoenix summon stone, but Alyssa reminds her how she caused trouble when she summoned a volcano dragon. Viola throws a tantrum in the street, and she starts to attract the attention of the people around. Alyssa ends up giving in, and they visit the store that Viola wanted to check out. The shopkeeper Lyra calls Alyssa soft for always giving in to Viola, but she's jealous of how close the two of them are because her own son is in his rebellious phase. She warns Alyssa that she'll need to learn how to discipline Viola, but Alyssa thinks she's still a child. Lyra points out that Viola is already 16, so she's overdue for her rebellious phase. Alyssa thinks of Viola as still a baby, and Lyra realizes she perceives time differently since she's a witch. Viola finally chooses a stone, and they leave the shop. Alyssa thinks about being more strict with Viola, but when Viola thanks her for the gift, her heart just melts. As they walk through the street, the men admire Viola's good looks, but she mistakenly thinks that they are having dirty thoughts about her mother, so she thinks about putting a curse on them all. As they have lunch together, Viola warns her mother to be careful around guys, but Alyssa assures her that no one has ever tried to hit on her. She thinks she isn't pretty enough, but Viola remembers the time she was approached, but they were actually just treating her like a kid. Alyssa returns home, where she has tea with her childhood friends, Giriko and Luna, she tells them about how people keep mistaking her as Viola's apprentice, and they suggest that she should dress up more like a witch. But Alyssa notes that when she tries to look more like a witch, it looks more like a Halloween costume. Her friends mention how fast girls grow up, thinking Viola might even have a partner soon. Alyssa thinks about this possibility, but at that moment, we see Viola using her summoning stone. She suddenly bursts into the room, asking if she can keep the phoenix that she summoned. Alyssa immediately tells her to send it back, while Giriko and Luna are glad that they don't have any kids. Viola greets the two witches as her aunts, but they get offended because it makes them sound old. Alyssa thinks it's okay since they are all over 200, but they bully her, telling her that her youthful appearance won't last forever. Viola protects her mother, so Giriko and Luna tell her they were just messing around. The two think back to how small Viola was 13 years ago, and they are impressed with how much she's grown. After Giriko and Luna leave, Alyssa brings up the topic of dating with Viola, since she's at that age. Viola says she's never even thought about it, wondering why her mother would bring up such a topic, and she suddenly thinks it must be because her mother found someone. She worries about losing her mother, telling her not to date anyone, so Alyssa assures her that she has never thought about dating, saying she is happy with just the two of them. The next morning, Viola mentions that she wants a familiar, and Alyssa realizes why she's been into summoning lately. She wants to keep the phoenix, but Alyssa tells her that their house isn't suited to keeping it. She suggests picking something else, so Viola chooses a cat. Alyssa likes the idea, remembering how she used to have some as a kid, but Viola changes her mind, not wanting them to steal her mother's love. Alyssa gets excited at the thought of getting a cat, but Viola thinks about getting an ugly monster that her mother won't love. Alyssa tells her she needs to be more specific, and Viola decides she wants a familiar that can shoot laser beams. As she continues to think, Viola wonders why her mother doesn't have her own familiar. Alyssa explains that familiars are usually summoned to help out, but she notes that Viola has always been enough for her. Alyssa tells her that it's a big responsibility to become a guardian of a familiar, so she tells her to think about it carefully. The next day, Viola brings a seedling to her mother, thinking she should try taking care of it before deciding on a familiar. Alyssa is happy to hear this, promising to support her, but the phoenix suddenly appears, jealous that Viola chose a plant over him. 
We see Viola taking care of the seedling, but the phoenix shows off how it can also handle water, making it rain on himself. Viola thinks it's pointless for him to compete with a seedling, saying it's still growing, but the phoenix shows off how it can also grow, as it stretches out its neck. The phoenix acts as the seedling's senior, telling it that if it works hard every day, it will also be able to grow big. Viola is glad they are getting along, but the phoenix suddenly bursts into flames, and Viola quickly douses him with water. Alyssa returns home from the shops, but she suddenly trips over. The phoenix is suddenly scared, as it notices a cucumber on the ground, and Alyssa realizes that he behaves just like a cat. Viola returns to Lyra's shop, saying she wants to buy poisonous herbs, because she wants to defeat someone. As Lyra gets the herbs, she comments on how much Viola has grown, saying she still remembers when Viola was just a baby. In a flashback, we see Alyssa bringing Viola to Lyra, who wants to punish the person responsible for abandoning Viola because she could have died. Alyssa reveals that Viola has a lot of magic for a human, and she wants to teach her how to use it. Lyra offers to help, revealing that she just had a son, so she will be able to breastfeed Viola. Alyssa starts to do her research on how to raise a baby, and she even looked into breast milk magic, but her theories aren't working. So she starts crying, thinking that breastfeeding is the best way to show her love for Viola, but Lyra rejects the idea, telling her not to waste her time with her research. Alyssa reveals that Viola has been summoning things while she's sleeping, and Lyra knows that this is called bed spelling, thinking this should go away after she grows up. Alyssa explains that Viola cries when this happens, so Lyra suggests staring her down, and Alyssa is surprised to hear this. She says that she has been struggling to raise Viola, because she is more powerful than she looks, showing Lyra the damage that her magic caused. Alyssa reveals that she is using magic to help raise Viola, but she thinks that this makes her a terrible person, because she takes a shortcut with everything. However, Lyra tells her that it's fine, revealing that she used to eat wheat straight from the bag to avoid cooking. Alyssa thinks that she isn't a good mother, but Lyra tells her that every family raises a child differently, and that the only thing that matters is that the family is happy. Back in the present, Lyra gives Viola the herbs, and Alyssa enters the store. Viola tells her mother they were just talking about her. As Lyra observes them, she thinks that Alyssa didn't go wrong, seeing how happy they are together. Alyssa wants to meet Lyra's son, so she calls out to him, but he calls her a hag. This makes her angry, so she charges into his room, and she starts beating him up. After some time, we see Alyssa picking up herbs, when an elf merchant named Fennel tells her that he wants to buy the stocks for the month. He reveals that he's always looking forward to seeing her, but Viola tries to poison him, so Alyssa tells her to apologize, but Viola says that he started it. We learn that when she was six years old, he wanted her to call him her father, and to this day, Viola still hates him for this. But Alyssa calls her rude, saying Fennel is like her little brother, and he is devastated to hear this. She reveals that he was still a child when they first met, and that he used to walk with her back when he was afraid of monsters. But Viola tells him she's closer with Alyssa, since they've been together since she was a baby, and Alyssa even changed her diapers. Alyssa makes tea for Fennel, but Viola dips her fingers into it, so Alyssa scolds her for this, ordering her to give him a new cup. He notices that Viola is smiling, and he realizes that this is all part of her plan, since she didn't want him to drink the tea that Alyssa prepared for him. Alyssa delivers the goods to Fennel, telling him that he is a huge help to her business. Fennel doesn't want to be treated as a little brother, so he thinks about confessing his feelings to her, but he knows that he needs to grab her attention first. He approaches her, asking her what she would do if his hands turned to broccoli, and Alyssa just thinks there's something wrong with him. Fennel falls to his knees, knowing he has failed, as Alyssa leaves to get cake. Viola tells him that she didn't kill him, because she knows that he doesn't stand a chance. But he tells her that she needs to learn, because she keeps getting into trouble just to get in his way, but the phoenix suddenly attacks him. Alyssa returns with the cake, but she sees the phoenix eating fennel, so she saves him, but the phoenix claims that it was an act of friendship. Viola still ends up getting scolded, and Alyssa apologizes to Fennel for what happened, but he tells her that it's okay, saying he already knows about Viola's attitude. Alyssa thanks him for hanging out with Viola, hoping he will take care of her, but this makes him realize that he can't compete with her. As he leaves, he encounters Viola, who has prepared a game for him, but Fennel just runs away.
so Viola is forced to catch him. She tells him to play the fishing game, where he needs to catch three eels to win. Fennel doesn't want to play, but she promises to give him Alyssa's photo as a reward, and this is enough to make him change his mind. The game begins, as he swings his rod wildly, but the eels aren't taking the bait. Viola tries to give him a tip, but he just tells her to shut up. A sigil shines brightly, as Viola tells him that this is his chance, because he will win the game if he catches the golden eel. So he tries to catch it, determined to win Alyssa's photo, but it hides in the sigil, as it reels him in with its strength. He ultimately manages to overpower it, thinking he has won the game, but we see that he just caught the phoenix, and he realizes that they never had any intention to let him win. In a flashback to 10 years earlier, we see Alyssa waking up as she finds the room filled with eels. Viola cries over bed spelling, and we see she wet the bed, but it turns out to be a water spirit that was attracted by Viola's powers, wanting to be her friend. Alyssa goes on to explain that spirits are not living creatures but magic itself. There are all kinds of spirits, but usually they can't be seen. Viola asks about her spiritual eels, but her mother explains that they are actually monsters. Viola continues reading the book, taking a liking to the mythical beasts, saying she will bring them all home one day. Back in the present, we see Fennel buying a chair from Glend, the orc carpenter. He thanks him for the work and wants to repay him since it was a last-minute request, so Glind asks him to help him get a girlfriend. Glind starts to beg him, and Fennel thinks it's a bad idea, but Glind reminds him how he owes him for helping him with his business, so Fennel tells him he has someone in mind. We see Fennel introducing Viola to him, but Viola kicks Fennel, and she demands an explanation for the introduction. Fennel begs her to just have tea with him, and when she refuses, he tells her she could just reject him. He keeps insisting until eventually she agrees, but Viola explains that she has conditions, demanding that Fennel humiliate himself while begging her for the favor. After that, the three go to a coffee shop, and they start introducing themselves. Glenn thanks Fennel for the chance, and Fennel warns him that she can suddenly become violent. They start talking about how they met, noting that it's been quite some time. Viola becomes interested and asks if he knows Fennel's weaknesses, and Glenn says he will tell her anything she wants to know. Viola continues and compliments his craftsmanship, but Glenn says using magic is more impressive, while Viola suggests showing off by summoning an elf-eating monster. After dessert, Glenn tries to get to know Viola, but she only manages to talk about her mother. Glenn becomes confused about whether she's really interested, but Fennel assures him she's serious. Glynn continues to compliment her, and even asks about her mother, thinking she must be amazing, but Fennel and Viola suddenly glare at him, telling him not to even think about it, and he immediately backs down. In the end, Viola is pleased that he recognizes her mother is amazing, and tells him he can come to her house as her new friend. Glynn is happy about this, but Viola clarifies, saying they will never go beyond just being friends. After the meeting, Glynn is sad that she wasn't interested, but Fennel tells him not to give up, because he thinks that if Viola gets a boyfriend, she won't be as protective of her mother. Glynn scolds him for rooting for him out of self-interest, and they end up arguing again. Fennel starts to talk about his plan to have a chance with Alyssa, but we see Viola appear behind him. She tells him he left his wallet, but he just dashes away. At home, Alyssa is preparing food, when Viola arrives and introduces Glynn, but he only manages to mumble about not challenging her daughter, while Fennel appears inside a monster's belly. We see Alyssa carrying an egg, which makes Viola worried, thinking she lays eggs, but Alyssa says it's a lizardman's egg, and we learn she is helping take care of it for a hunter couple. Alyssa tells Viola to try holding the egg, but she starts squirming, and she's too scared of breaking it, so she refuses to touch it. Alyssa explains that the egg is pretty tough but we see that its parents are also worried about breaking it. Phoenix suddenly enters the room, becoming jealous of the egg, but calms down when he finds out it's a lizard man, and tells Viola to take good care of it, like an older sister. Viola offers to help, and Alyssa talks about the tradition of putting the eggs in a hot spring and praying for their health, but the Phoenix says it reminds him of a boiled egg, making Viola get defensive. Alyssa suggests that they read a story to it, explaining that the baby can hear external sounds even from inside the egg. Viola suggests telling it about the cutest thing in the world, which happens to be her mother. 
Phoenix suggests he could sing to it, but Viola worries, remembering his weird sound waves. Phoenix assures her that his music is actually made to calm any species, but mentions it has a side effect of causing hallucinations. Alyssa decides to hold the egg while Viola talks to it. She wishes it good health, telling it to grow at least 5 meters, but Alyssa tells her not to pressure it, so Viola tells it to be whatever it wants, even if it's not a lizard man. At the end of the day, the couple comes to pick up the egg, and they thank them for taking care of it. The mother asks if Viola wants to say goodbye, and she finally holds it, hoping they can continue to be friends. We see Fel walking happily because Alyssa invited him for dinner. A magic circle suddenly appears, and he finds himself in a playground, with Viola in front of him. He wonders if she's still mad about the coffee shop date, but she just tells him to back off from her mother. She plans to introduce him to one of her friends, and Fel thinks she is being nice, but it turns out to be the elf-eating monster. Viola tells him that it likes him, and she decides not to be a third wheel, so she teleports away. Fennel tries to offer the monster his flowers, but we see him being eaten once again. The next day, Phoenix approaches Viola, telling her that they have a visitor. A tiny booty appears, and it starts talking to her, but she becomes startled. She shows it to Alyssa, who reveals that it's a fairy, explaining that its appearance changes depending on its environment. Viola can't believe that a fairy can take such a form, and he reveals that his name is Hip, saying he needs their help to stop his brother. They go to a mansion, where they meet the girl Anna, who shows them around the place. They reach the garden, and Anna explains that the flowers have stopped blooming, saying she doesn't know what's causing it. But she's happy that Alyssa and Viola are willing to help her, saying she will give them a gold bar if they succeed. She leaves them in the garden, and Hip appears, revealing that his brother is the reason why the flowers have stopped blooming. He summons his brother, and another fairy appears, revealing that his name is Cheeks. He charges at Hip, and they start fighting, because he is angry that Hip brought outsiders to their garden. Viola tells him to calm down, but he says that he is doing this for Anna, and at that moment, she arrives with her fiancé Torino. But Alyssa and Viola are surprised to see him, because he looks like a total loser. Anna reveals that they will be moving to his hometown after they get married, but he explains that she doesn't want to leave, because she is worried about her garden, so he tells Alyssa and Viola to fix it. But Cheeks becomes upset, so he attacks Torino, and Alyssa explains that they are still investigating the garden, so she advises him to leave. Cheeks reveals that he wants to stop Anna's marriage, and we learn that he has been watching over her since she was a baby. He thinks that Torino wants her money, and Viola seems to agree with him, saying she will use the magic mirror to investigate Torino, but she needs a part of his body to cast the spell. Cheeks shows her the blood he left behind, and she uses it on the mirror, allowing them to see what he's been doing. But they are surprised to see that he is actually a great person, and he seems to really love Anna. Viola takes a liking to him, but Cheeks isn't convinced, saying he could be a human trafficker. Alyssa thinks that Cheeks doesn't want to let go of Anna, because she's like a daughter to him. Viola thinks that he should tell Anna how he feels, and she sees Anna approaching, so she decides to show him to her. But Anna can't see him, and we learn that only people who use magic can see fairies, so Viola becomes sad, because Anna will never learn about them. Cheeks has had enough, and he decides to restore the roses in the garden, but Viola thinks that it's not the right thing to do. The next day, Viola and Alyssa return to the garden, saying they want to talk to Cheeks. The Phoenix thinks that it's unusual for an artificial garden to produce fairies, because they are usually born in areas without people. So Alyssa thinks that someone must have treasured the garden, and that person must have been addicted to booty. She reveals that Anna might be able to see the fairies, if she acknowledges their existence, and Viola thinks this is great news, but Cheeks falls silent. In a flashback, we learn that Anna used to frequent the garden with her father, but he eventually passed away. After his death, she continues to look after the garden, and Cheeks is worried about her, so he keeps shouting at her, but Hip tells him to calm down, reminding him that she can't hear them. One day, he realizes that she fell asleep while reading a book, and he notices that she's exposed to the sun, so he uses his powers to create more shade. Back in the present, Viola and Alyssa talk to Anna, asking her if she sensed anything in the garden. She tells them that she felt safe whenever she was there, so she felt like someone was watching over her, but she thinks that it's her father. 
they return to the garden and Viola is frustrated because Anna's father isn't the one watching over her. Cheeks says that he'll just restore the garden, thinking he's being selfish because there's no need for her to know about him. Alyssa decides to respect his decision, telling him to make the flowers bloom in front of Anna and Torino. So when they arrive at the garden, Cheeks uses his energy to restore the flowers, creating a beautiful scene for the couple. He realizes that he never wanted to be her father, and all he really wanted was to see her smile. But we see that he has used up all of his energy, and he is about to die, but the phoenix fires an energy beam, allowing him to recover. He realizes that he was being foolish, because there was no reason for him to worry, but she thinks that it's normal for parents to think that way. Alyssa and Viola return home, and they receive a letter from Anna, inviting them to the wedding. Alyssa thinks that the fairies will be lonely, but Viola thinks that there's still plenty of time, saying Anna might be able to see them in the future. We see Viola baking cookies, and she is happy with the result. She shows it to Alyssa, but she thinks that it looks like poop, and she doesn't know how to react. Viola reveals that she tried to make it look like eels, and Alyssa tells her that it looks great, thinking she put a lot of work into making them. She tries to convince herself that they look like eels, but Viola points her to one of them, and it really looks like poop. So Alyssa hates herself, because she can't control her thoughts. Viola tells her to cheer up, giving her a cookie, but she refuses to eat it, and she realizes that she can change its color to make it look more appetizing. So she tells Viola that they should make other flavors, but upon seeing the finished product, she starts laughing. Viola thinks that she's having fun, but we learn that she sees it as colored poop. Viola realizes that they made too many, so she thinks about giving them as gifts to their friends. She puts them in a plastic bag, but she sees Alyssa's reaction, thinking there must be something wrong with her cookies. But Alyssa says that there's nothing wrong with it, and she starts eating it, saying it tastes good. Viola decides to try it, and Alyssa sees her eating it, causing her to throw up. The phoenix sees the cookies, and he thinks that Alyssa is playing with food, saying he doesn't approve of her actions. They end up inviting their friends, and everyone enjoys the cookies together. That evening, we see Viola reading a story, and Alyssa tells her that it's time to sleep, warning her that the Sandman is going to remove her eyes, but she isn't afraid, saying the Sandman is already in the room. We learn that he is a sleep fairy, and according to legend, he sprinkles the sand on people's eyes to make them go to sleep. Alyssa is afraid that he will remove her eyes, but he explains that it's just a story made to scare children, and he gives her his autograph. She wonders what he's doing there, and he reveals that he's been having trouble sleeping, so he fell asleep while he was flying, causing him to crash into her house. Viola explains that she was reading the book to help him fall asleep, but it didn't work. Alyssa knows that his sand can put people to sleep, telling him to use it on himself, but he's afraid that he might become addicted to it, revealing that it works like a drug. He explains that he doesn't use it much, saying he sits on people's eyes to put them to sleep. He thinks that he can't sleep because of stress, saying his life is complicated, and the biggest source of his stress is his wife, who decided to leave him. He adds that he's having issues with his health, so Viola thinks about summoning the phoenix, because he can improve the Sandman's health. But Alyssa advises her not to do it, because it's the middle of the night, telling her to be considerate about when she summons him. Alyssa tells the Sandman that they can summon the phoenix tomorrow, and Viola explains that he can sing a soothing melody, but she warns the Sandman that he will hallucinate if he listens for more than five minutes. Alyssa offers to give him hot milk, thinking it will help his body relax, but he becomes upset, as he recalls his colleague, who makes people sleep by pouring milk on their eyes. The Sandman seems to dislike him, but Viola says that she prefers milk over sand, so he totally loses it. She thinks that a lullaby might be able to help him sleep, and they decide to try it out, but Alyssa sees him staring at her. He tells her that she's being nice to him, and he feels guilty because he's still awake. So she thinks that they pressured him, and Viola suggests not thinking about sleep too much. But he becomes upset, saying sleep is important, because people suffer if they don't get enough of it. He decides not to trouble them anymore, and he is about to leave, but they stop him, knowing he will crash again. His body loses strength, as Alyssa thinks about addressing the fundamental issue. So the next day, they visit the doctor, who agrees to help the Sandman sleep better, and after the consultation, he thanks Alyssa and Viola for their help. 
Alyssa tells him not to be embarrassed about his condition, saying it's better to consult a professional whenever he needs help. He gives them a bottle of sand, saying they can sell it for a high price and use the money to treat themselves. He bids them farewell, and after some time, Alyssa tells Kiriko about the item, causing her to freak out because it's extremely expensive. She tells Alyssa that she's going to buy it, warning her not to tell anyone that she has it because it could attract dangerous thieves. So that evening, we see that Viola is sleeping well, but Alyssa is still awake, thinking their lives are in danger. The next day, Luna visits their house, asking Alyssa if she can teach her how to cook, but she refuses. So Luna begs Alyssa to teach her, as Viola wonders why Alyssa is against it. She explains that their kitchen might explode, but Luna offers to compensate them if that happens. We learn that Luna comes from a long line of fortune tellers, and a few witches in her family are born with extraordinary ability, but the gift comes with a curse. She reveals that she is cursed with terrible cooking skills, but she thinks that this is totally fine because her chef can do the cooking for her. She explains that she just wants to cook, but Alyssa thinks that they're going to become her victims. She tries to make a sandwich, slicing the ingredients and putting them in bread, but it somehow turns into a disgusting creature, explaining that no matter what she makes, the result is always terrible. Alyssa fears for their safety, but Viola thinks that they should give Luna a chance, and she is overjoyed to hear this. Viola wonders if they should throw away her sandwich, thinking it would be a waste, but Luna reveals that Giriko wants them for some reason. She tries to make a salad, and it turns into a strange plant, but she is happy with the result, because it at least looks like a vegetable. Alyssa teaches Luna how to cook steak, and the dish looks great, but she warns them not to let their guard down, because there's a strange energy inside. She tries making a dessert, but the result looks bad, and she eats it, realizing that it tastes weird, but we learn that she is happy that she was able to eat it. She explains that her cooking is still edible, saying her father once ate her food, and his nipples played music as a side effect. The phoenix joins them, and he eats the steak, causing him to explode, as his appearance changes drastically. Alyssa knows that Luna only cooks when something is on her mind, and she reveals that she had a vision, saying someone they know is about to return. This causes Alyssa to panic, wondering if she can avoid the person, but Luna tells her that it's unavoidable, saying she won't be able to keep her secret anymore. At that moment, Luna's sandwich becomes unstable, and it explodes, so she protects everyone with a barrier, and compensates them for the damage. After some time, Viola notices that Alyssa is acting strange, thinking it must be because of Luna. But she notes that there's another problem, because the phoenix is also being weird. They visit a hospital, where they meet the nurse Sheeta, who wonders what the phoenix ate before he transformed. Alyssa doesn't know the answer, saying he seems healthy, but she is worried about him because his appearance changed and he still hasn't returned to normal. Sheeta calls the doctor Kikla, who specializes in mythical beasts, but she says that she wants to keep him. Sheeta reminds her that he is their patient, so she checks his record, saying she needs to dissect him to diagnose his condition. But Sheeta stops her, explaining that she does crazy things when she is curious, and Sheeta assures them that she will watch over Kikla, saying she's never had an incident with a patient. She apologizes for being too excited, explaining that phoenixes are very rare, and not much is known about them, so she wants to examine him. She loses control, so Sheeta drags her away, but the phoenix says that he understands how she feels, saying he is willing to be studied. She begins her interview, and she learns that his appearance has changed, thinking it must be because of magic. She orders Sheeta to prepare for a diagnostic test, but she starts acting weird, wondering if she can touch the phoenix, so Sheeta restrains her, asking her what they should do next. She tells Sheeta to test his blood, but he explains that he doesn't give his blood to strangers, so he refuses to have it tested. Kikla listens to his breathing, but he ends up firing his energy beam right in her face. She reveals that she can't understand his condition, and she suddenly clings to him, asking him if she's good enough for him. But at that moment, Dr. Benny arrives, and he restrains Kikla, as he apologizes for her behavior, but the phoenix tells him not to worry, saying he understands why she's acting that way. He examines the record, asking the phoenix about his bowel movements after he ate the food. Hearing this, he enters the bathroom, and after he takes a dump, he returns to normal, revealing that he never had a bowel movement after he ate it. As they leave the hospital, 
They talk about Kikla's strange behavior, but the phoenix notes that he feels heavy, and we see her clinging to him. They return to their house, and Viola notes that Alyssa is still acting weird. She wonders why Alyssa is worried, because she isn't telling her anything, so the phoenix suggests asking someone they know. She tries asking Luna, but she explains that she's busy, saying she still has a client, but we see that she's with a man, and they appear to be doing something weird. So Viola calls Kiriko, who reveals that she knows what's happening, but she refuses to tell her about it, saying it should make things more interesting. Viola visits Lyra, but she reveals that she doesn't know anything, saying she can't imagine someone who Alyssa doesn't want to meet. Viola notes that Alyssa is a good person, revealing that she captured Kikla and gave her tea while she was waiting for Sheeta to arrive. Lyra explains that she has known Alyssa for 18 years, but she says that Alyssa is over two centuries old, so she is certain that she doesn't know everything about her. She tells Viola not to use a poisonous herb when she meets the person, but she reveals that she has already summoned the toxic koala named Screechy. Lyra thinks that the person could be Alyssa's ex-boyfriend, but Viola reveals that she has never had a lover. Meanwhile, we see the man named Ori walking around the town when he hears Viola talking about Alyssa. So he enters Lyra's store, asking her if she knows Alyssa, as he reveals that he is looking for her. Viola attacks him, but he is attracted to her beauty, asking her if they've met before. But Lyra grabs him, telling him not to hit on Viola, who notes that he looks dangerous, so she thinks that he's up to no good. She believes that he's in love with Alyssa, thinking he's a stalker, so she decides to deal with him. She tells him that Alyssa is her mother, causing him to pass out. At that moment, Alyssa enters the store, and she sees him on the floor, recognizing him as her father. She tells him about Viola, and he reveals that he was afraid, because he thought that she got married. He wonders why Alyssa didn't tell him about Viola, saying she is too young to raise a child. But she explains that she was planning to tell him, and she was just waiting for Viola to reach a certain age, because she didn't want her to grow up with him, thinking he's a bad influence. She wonders why he didn't bother to contact her, so he reveals that he's a wanted man, and Lyra restrains him, calling him a criminal, but he says that his case has already been dismissed. He explains that a nobleman framed him because he was having an affair with his wife, claiming he's innocent. But Alyssa doesn't believe him, revealing that when she was a kid, he gave her brass knuckles when she was being bullied, saying she should kill the people messing with her. She adds that Giriko and Luna saw him as a loser because he liked to gamble and he kept bragging about his achievements, so she was ashamed of him, thinking he should never be around children. But Viola thinks he's cool, so he offers to buy her a castle, and they seem to get along quite well. Lyra is surprised that he has already accepted Viola, and he reveals that their family is complicated. Alyssa says that her parents are siblings, causing Lyra to freak out, but she explains that Ori's sister is her biological mother, and he just acted as her father. He is glad that she's doing well, and he decides to leave, but she tells him that he can stay in her house, thinking he won't do anything to Viola. He is happy to hear this, but Lyra reveals that he hit on Viola, so Alyssa beats him up, telling him not to return. Back in their house, Alyssa reveals that her mother visited Viola when she was still a baby, and Alyssa thinks that her mother is a great person. Meanwhile, we see Ori thinking about how he messed up, and he admits that he was attracted to Viola, but only because she looks familiar. At Lyra's shop, we see Pondo as he calls his son, saying it's time for breakfast. But he refuses to leave his room, so Pondo plays the violin, and he becomes upset, telling Pondo not to disturb him. Viola arrives, reminding him that they are going to go shopping, but he still refuses to leave, so she wonders what's wrong with him. Pondo advises her to lure him out by making him curious, so she tells him that her parents are siblings, thinking he would like to hear the rest of the story, but it doesn't work. We learn that he is her childhood friend, but now that he has entered his rebellious phase, he doesn't want to see her anymore. She tries to use unlocking magic, but the door won't open, so she thinks about burning it down, saying Lyra will punish him when she returns. But Pondo doesn't want him to get hurt, saying Lyra should be on the way home. He tells Viola about the story of the north wind and the sun, where the wind tried to remove a man's coat but failed, while the sun succeeded by simply shining down on him. So she summons the sun, causing the room to heat up, but Pondo hears his son struggling, and he begs her to have mercy. 
She calls the phoenix, and he reprimands Pondo's son for his actions, saying he has no manners. He starts to feel guilty, revealing that he doesn't want to come out, because he can't get his bedhead under control. But at that moment, Lyra returns home, and she starts pummeling the door, telling him to get out. After some time, we see that he received a beating, and Pondo wonders why he doesn't want to leave. He explains that it's because of Viola, so Pondo thinks that he must like her, but he denies this, saying she's not his type, but Pondo doesn't believe him. After some time, we see that the monster Gouda was able to give birth to a baby, and Lyra suggests taking him to the park for his debut. So they go to the park, as Lyra reveals that mothers gather at that area, thinking Gouda will be able to build her connections. But at that moment, a girl named Lady arrives, and she seems to look down on Lyra. She recognizes Lady, saying she is an evil woman who likes to pick fights, but we learn that she actually has feelings for Lyra, and she wants to be her friend. But she has a terrible personality, so she can't get anyone to like her. She sees Alyssa, thinking she must be Lyra's best friend, so she feels jealous, but Viola notices her staring at Alyssa, saying she senses hostility. Lyra thinks they should leave, but Lady sees Gouda, realizing that her baby is having a debut, and she challenges them to a battle, saying the daughter of her friend Bertie is also having a debut. She says that the side which socializes with the most people is going to win, but she has no idea why she's doing this, because she doesn't want Lyra to become her enemy. Lyra declines, and she is relieved to hear this, as she thinks about changing the topic, but she ends up provoking Lyra, saying she can never win the battle. So she accepts the challenge, and Lady realizes that she messed up, not knowing why she's doing this. We see that everyone knows Lyra, so Viola thinks that it should be an easy win. Lyra suggests approaching groups, thinking it will be more efficient, so Viola talks to a group of suspicious men, but we see that they are actually fathers, and they turn out to be good people. Viola thinks about summoning cute monsters to attract children, but we learn that the phoenix is busy, so she summons eels instead, and the kids start playing with them. Lady's group sees this, thinking Viola is cheating, because she is using magic to make friends. But we learn that Lady doesn't really care about this, and she's only upset because Lyra turned into a babysitter. Bertie's daughter wants to talk to Gouda's baby, but Bertie tells her that she can't, because he is with their enemy. Alyssa sees this, and she realizes that the fight is pointless. So at the end of the challenge, Alyssa tells them that they tied, but Lady and Lyra become upset, because she is interfering with the results. But she explains that the mothers should think about the interest of their children, and they realize that they didn't give their babies the chance to play. She reminds Lady that she never mentioned which generation should socialize during the challenge, and since the babies never talk to anyone, the score is zero for both sides. She tells Lyra and Lady to reconcile, and she seems to know about Lady's affection for Lyra, so she gives her the signal. Lady thinks that Alyssa is doing this for her sake, and Lyra tells her that they should shake hands, but she becomes nervous, so she ends up slapping Lyra's hand, calling her a loser, and running away. Lady thinks that she's a terrible person, but she's happy that she was able to touch Lyra. The next day, Viola tells the Phoenix to look after the house while she's away. So after she leaves, he tells Screechy that he is going to act as the senior. He reminds Screechy that he must obey Viola while they're in the house, but he climbs the curtain, causing it to break, and he blames the phoenix for the mess. He thinks that Screechy is misbehaving because he's hungry, so the phoenix gives him pancakes, but he gobbles it up, and he wants to eat the phoenix's food. But the phoenix tells him that he's had enough, and he creates a pancake made of poison, but the phoenix doesn't want to trade his food for it. After the meal, he notices that Screechy is more active, because he's no longer hungry, so the phoenix stops him, telling him to behave. He challenges the phoenix to a fight, and he agrees to fight him, but Screechy notices a sound, thinking it must be Viola. So he rushes to the door, but he realizes that she isn't there, so he starts crying. After some time, Screechy falls asleep, and the phoenix thinks about cleaning the house, but at that moment, Viola returns, and Alyssa is surprised to see the mess. Viola blames the phoenix saying he didn't look after Screechy, but he tells her that he doesn't want to be the senior anymore, because Screechy is too difficult for him to handle. Alyssa gives the phoenix plenty of desserts, and he consumes all of them. So after a few days, he ends up becoming obese, and he sees this as proof that he is unable to control his appetite. 
but Alyssa blames herself because she gave him too much to eat, so she invites him to train with her, saying they will lose weight together. Viola wonders how people lose weight, and the phoenix thinks he should stop eating for a year. But Alyssa tells him that it's too extreme, saying they should just improve their eating habits. Kikla joins them, telling them that she can help the phoenix lose weight. She reveals that she can remove his fat through surgery, but Alyssa thinks that she's up to no good. However, she explains that she won't do it without consent, and she really wants to help him. So she gives him nutrition advice, telling him what foods he should eat for weight loss, and she encourages him to exercise. They go to an open field, where they prepare for their workout, but they see that Kikla is already exhausted, because she is out of shape. She tells them that sudden exercise is bad for the body, and they think that she serves as a good example of this. She instructs the phoenix to run, so he dashes away, and she sees him floating, causing her to feel better. He is instructed to perform side steps, and they think that his speed is insane, but he reveals that he's just creating clones that look like after images. Viola wonders if he will lose weight by creating clones using his fat, but Alyssa doesn't want to see it happen, thinking the result will scare her. Later that day, Kikla reveals that she created a workout plan for everyone, and the phoenix thanks her, saying he was wrong about her, because he thought that she just wanted to play with his body. She tells him that she wants to help his family, telling him to do his best, because Alyssa and Viola are worried about him. So he continues to focus on his training and nutrition, determined to lose weight, but after a month, we see that he has turned into a tiny creature, so Alyssa and Viola are trying to make him fat again. Meanwhile, we see Fel and Glenn visiting a prison cell, where Ori is being detained. Glenn tells him that they will help him escape, but he will have to teach them how to get girls. After some time, Ori reveals that he got caught cheating in a casino, and he thanks them for saving him, saying he'll be more careful from now on. Fel thinks they shouldn't listen to his advice, because his morals are questionable, but Glenn knows that he's good with women. Glenn asks him about his secret, but he tells them it's his looks, saying he has nothing to teach them. So Glenn cries, and Fennel tries to cheer him up, saying he knows someone who is better with the ladies. Hearing this, Ori becomes upset, saying he is the best when it comes to women. He explains that the secret to getting girls is having sympathy for others, saying they just need to have good people skills. He reveals that he once turned into a girl, because his sister wanted to see what would happen to him, so she used a spell to transform him. He isn't happy about the experience, but he thinks that he understands girls better, because he was able to stand in their shoes. He explains that men are stronger than women, so they need to be careful how they flirt, because it's very easy to intimidate girls. And Fennel thinks about the women he knows, thinking they're so strong that he forgot about that. Ori explains that being a woman is hard, saying men looked down on him after he turned into a girl, because they thought that he couldn't fight back, so he beat them up. He thinks that Fennel and Glind are ready to learn his techniques, because their fundamentals are flawed, telling them that there's no secret, but he reveals that he knows a shortcut, and they are eager to learn about it. Meanwhile, Alyssa hears him, as he tells them that he'll turn them into girls, saying it's the only way to understand women. She hears them resisting, so she attacks Ori, beating him up. The next day, Ori visits Alyssa and Viola, but Alyssa finds him suspicious, telling him to go away. He explains that he just wants to spend time with them, and he sees Luna and Giriko, wondering why they didn't tell him about Viola. So they tell him that Alyssa didn't want him to know anything, thinking he's a bad influence. She reveals that he's the last person to find out, causing him to freak out, as he claims that Luna and Giriko aren't good for Viola, but she tells him this isn't true. He realizes that Fennel knows about Viola, so he calls him, threatening to kill him if he doesn't show up. He rushes to the house, but upon arriving, Ori tells him that he's going to die, and he sees Giriko and Luna smiling at him, so he wonders what's going on. Alyssa tells them to stop picking on him, and Viola tells Ori that Fennel likes Alyssa, but he doesn't care, saying Fennel doesn't stand a chance anyway. Ori reveals that he's hanging out with Fennel and Glind, and Viola tells him that Glind is her friend, so he realizes that Glind also knows about her, causing him to fall into despair, because they kept him in the dark. Alyssa reminds him about what happened last night, but he explains that there was a warrant for his arrest, and he didn't want her to get involved. So he chose to spend time with Fennel instead, saying he doesn't care what happens to Fennel. Alyssa's friends think he's guilty, 
and they think about handing him over to the police, so he starts fighting with them. Viola says that she wants to meet her grandmother, asking Alyssa to describe her. So Alyssa reveals that she's mysterious, and in a flashback, we see her visiting Viola, as she explains that there is no connection between blood ties and love. She says that Alyssa needs to take responsibility for Viola, saying she isn't against raising her, and she tells Alyssa that she loves her. Back in the present, Alyssa reveals that she loves her mother, and Viola sees Ori getting beat up, asking her if she also loves him, but she doesn't answer the question. He starts crying, as she takes responsibility for what happened, telling her friends to stop attacking him. She takes her albums, and she shows them to Ori, who is happy to see the baby pictures of Viola. Luna sees a picture, and she recalls the time that Viola started talking. Luna and Giriko thought she was chanting spells at a young age, so they thought that she's a genius, but Alyssa knows that she was just baby talking. We learn that they used to play with Viola, and she enjoyed playing with them, but she still preferred being with Alyssa. Fel recalls that he used to look after Viola, but she never liked him, and when a woman asked if he was her father, she said that she doesn't know him. So the woman thought that he's a kidnapper, and she gave him a beating. Ori tells everyone about Alyssa, telling them that she was always sick, and she didn't have a lot of talent for magic. But he was always there to watch over her, even though the guards found him suspicious. He recalls that she was always cheerful, but whenever she cried, he showed her the clouds, and told her that it looks like poop. The phoenix sees the pictures of Viola, as Alyssa tells her that she still sees her as a child, and Ori feels the same way about Alyssa. But Phoenix tells them that they are all infants to him, and they don't know how to react, because he is an eternal being, but he holds everyone close, calling them his family. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.